February 25, 2010 was the 12th Annual Costume Designers Guild Awards. Rock Talk reporters Sarah Schussler and Anthony Tran found Sherlock Holmes costume designer and all-around costume legend Jenny Bevan on the red carpet. It's not Bevan, it's Bevan, like heaven. Lovely. So we're with Jenny Bevan. Bevan. Bevan, Bevan, Bevan. I'm Jenny Bevan, yes. How many, how many, is this your first nomination? Have you been nominated before? I was nominated last year for Cranford for the Costume Design Guild, because I do yeah, television wow. as, as well. Well, you never know. <laughs> so how was this last, this last project? Is Sherlock Holmes okay, yeah. right? What was that like to work on? Huge good fun. Guy Ritchie is magic to work for. And, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law get on as well in real life as they do on the screen. So it was a very happy, I mean, it was long and it was cold and, you know, um, difficult and lots of rewriting and changing. But generally a fantastically fun and productive and jolly crew. So, you know, you did very long hours, but you were really happy to go to work in the morning, which is my, That's huge. my way of, yes, judging, really. They're made new, but they are perfectly period and they're cut. I mean, he's actually wearing like vintage. Um, I mean, some of the stuff I use, the ideas, the stuff that came from Byron, um, a television film I did ages ago. But but it's all absolutely. There's nothing that wouldn't have looked in place in 1880, 90, whenever exactly we were. It's the way they wear it. They just have a bit of attitude, and I'm sure they did. If you look at the and the London Illustrated News, you get people standing, you know, with a hat on one side. Again, they're not doing anything that actually isn't period. It's just that they do it with such a sort of wonderful modern, yeah, <laughs> and the ease. How about, how about colour? That fuchsia dress is... Well, they now. had some fantastic colours then. They were into chemical dyes, you know, and I mean, if you think even of... Uh, and people like that, their paintings have strong colour. But I normally only use colour when I'm fairly safe. I know, and you know, okay, she was sort of wor working, but she had to stand out. I mean, she just had to. And there was a wonderful sequence where we actually changed her three times within a scene, and she ended up in men's clothes, but that all went as these things do. But never mind, that was fun. Um, do you have a favourite costume from the movie? Clothing, although I think amongst the extras there were some very fine looks. I loved the Russians and that you know they wanted a mixture of cultures because it was in London at that time. Already people were beginning to migrate into England, um, and I think in amongst the extras we did get some really interesting looks, um, albeit briefly. But that's fine. We did see them. But I mean, I do. I, I was very fond of Holmes and Watson. I guess <laughs> to be honest, yes, because they were they they. They balance, they match, they, and they were different too, yeah. and yet completely in the spirit of Conan Doyle. So yeah, yeah, I love that there there was a little love story between them, and I think their clothes kind of reflected that too. You know, the yes, fairness. they're mates. They're like, I mean, yeah. my daughter was just come out of university, and she's got a whole group of friends, male and female, and they really look out for each other. They're not romantically involved. They just really care about each other, and you know, it's it's. And they spat and this, but I just thought that was so brilliant, that relationship between them. You know, really heartwarming. So is this going to be, like, do you think there's going to be a sequel? Very much hoping so. And do you think it'll be the same team? They'll try to keep the same team? Or? Very much hoping so. <laughs> uh, yes, I mean, I think, I, as far as I know, it's... it's Robert Downey Jr. has tried to create a space to do it because he really enjoyed it too. Um, they absolutely want the same team. They just want to make sure they've got a really good story. So, you know, then they could even make more. I mean, yeah. be awful. Like sometimes, you know, they, they relax because the first one was, was really very good and it's made a lot of money. But actually it could have been better. So they know they want to make it as brilliant as possible and then maybe there'll be even more. You know, always the possibility anyhow. Who knows? I don't know.
I know nothing. How did you get involved with the project in the first place? Oh, the usual way. Phone goes about 10 in the morning. Jenny, are you near your computer? And if I email you a script, can you read it now and see Guy Ritchie at 3.30 in the afternoon? <laughs> yes, if he's in London. And, and, you know, I went and met him, and luckily I grabbed two books. It's really quite a good thing to do, because I had no idea. I didn't know what he was like. And he's quite quiet, and he's actually slightly shyer than... Um, I grabbed two books. One was Gustav Dore, and the other was small photographs of Victoria in London just that had an eclectic mix and I thought, just something, so we've got something to refer to um, and he fell for the Dore I mean, it was just wonderful um, um, from that moment on, Jenny we're going to do it like that the person you, you know, that book you found and um, he just loved the characters because it's all about characters so that's how I got involved, you know, and we got on and that's it, and that night it was like movie to look completely different and I'm saying Joel I haven't actually got the job yet oh well he likes you you know he so I mean that's how it seems to happen these days and my last job it was worse it was midday and could I get to meet, meet the director at three so yeah. I mean, the great thing is never get grand. Do learn all the, you know, really how to put on a corset properly and, and you know, every single sort of craft. You really should know how to, at least know how to cut, even if you're not good at it, how to, every single aspect is really useful to have somewhere. And never get grand. Each one's like a new, um, I mean, I learn so much on every show I do. So, I don't know, I just think... And just stay fresh and enjoy it. <laughs> and don't anticipate any kind of um, family life. Because you may have it, but it won't last. I mean, I do have a daughter, but, you know, <laughs> forget the rest. Because it's horrendous hours, and you do have to give it 150, 200%. You know, it's, it's not an easy one, but they're huge compensations. Of fabulous teams and friends you make and stuff. You know, and the fact you're never bored. Ever. Ever bored. Uh -huh. That's good.